Um, I hope you guys are having a great developer day so far. How many of you were here in this last track, uh, the last session in this room? Oh, okay, not many of you. Uh, so we're gonna take a turn and talk uh, uh, and do a deeper dive into some new um, some new Jira software APIs and the things behind it. Um, I want I want to introduce um, Oliver Byrne. He's come from Sydney. He's a senior architect on Jira software for the past five and a half years. Uh, is that true? Year and a half. But he's been in Atlassian for five and a half years. And at Atlassian, you don't typically, well, at least I haven't seen, seen many people uh, just work on one product for a long time. He's worked on things like Confluence Data Center uh, and Confluence Cloud. So uh, how many here are, are, are Java developers? Anyone here use, uh, use check style to check your coding style? Yes? So he's responsible for that if you don't like that tool. Um, but, he's al <laughs> but he also was uh, the, 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 the OG, the original contributor to uh, the originator of the project, um, Chainsaw, if you guys know Apache Chainsaw, the, the Log4j uh, UI. He's the author of that. Anyhow, uh, please welcome Oliver Byrne to the stage. Ah, good morning. So as you heard, my name is Oliver Byrne, and I've been at Alaskan for five and a half years. Uh, today, I'm going to talk to you about integrating CI CD pipelines with Jira Software Cloud. Um, I'm assuming most of you know what a CI CD pipeline is. Uh, if not, we can have that question at the end. <laughs> uh, so this talk is primarily targeted at uh, developers who are wanting to use these new APIs that I'm going to talk about and how make it show you how easy it is to actually integrate with Jira Software Cloud, wherever now I'm going to call Jira. Um, but also, just as developers in general, if you're wanting to see what's available that you can use today with your own Jira instances, uh, this talk should be of interest. So 380,000 people view the dev panel every day in Jira software. Uh, that's a lot of usage. And it really is reflective that people, when they're doing their work within Jira, need context. And that context is not only what they can see in Jira, but also the work that people are doing outside of Jira. Because let's be honest, the work is done outside of Jira. So previously, the information that was in the development panel, uh, it came really from a closed, pooled source integration model, which is to say that Jira was responsible for, hey, we want to integrate with uh, Bitbucket, so we'll go and get the data. Or if we want to integrate with GitHub, we write a, a connector, and that was it. That was what the information was limited to. So I'm happy to say that we're opening up. So since I've changed <laughs> roles and I'm working at Jira Software, the focus I've had uh, with the team is to open it up and make APIs available for everybody to be able to send data into Jira so that we can change it from it's being Jira's responsibility to pull in information, but to allow external systems to provide the data. So the four APIs have available. The first one is uh, we call the dev info. And this is the one everyone's familiar with, which is the commits, branches, and pull requests, um, whether it comes from Bitbucket or GitHub or uh, internal as well. So the second one, it's a new API, is around supporting builds. And this is you know, pretty much the workhorse of software development, is to run, to run a build. Usually it fails for me, but you know, get a build, get a status, get it, make, make that information available. And this is for standard tools like CircleCI, Bitbucket Pipelines, or Jenkins, um, which is very popular. The third API is targeted around develop deployments. So as you can see, we're sort of going down the delivery chain. And this is about tracking how software is released. You know, you build something, you build an artifact, it then starts to get deployed through uh, different environments and different stages. And so we have an API for enabling you to track the deployments. Uh, the tools like Octopus Deploy, Bitbucket Pipeline, CircleCI are examples of tools that would do that. And lastly, once you've actually deployed your software, specifically in the cloud or on mobiles, you have feature flags that you're using to actually start to make that software available to, to, to the end users. So we have an API specifically around tracking the status of a build of a feature flag so you can see how it's been rolled out 
to which cohorts and what percentage. And that's for tools like Launch Darkly, Rollout, or Optimizely. So how does it work from a perspective of actually you want to write some code and integrate with Jira? So everything we've done is currently based around using Alassian Connect, Connect apps. So when you build a Connect app, you have to provide a module, uh, a descriptor which says what APIs, what capabilities do you want to extend within Jira? And so for each of those four APIs, we've defined a module type. So for example, if you want to provide build information and call the build API, you need to define uh, a, mod a module descriptor, which is the build provider, which is very innovative of us. And basically, all that module descriptor is saying is just tell us some information about this connection. It could be the name of the, name of the uh, service that you're integrating, uh, a URL to go to the home page, that kind of information. Once you've defined your module descriptor and you've built the app, you deploy it to the marketplace. Once it's in the Alassian marketplace, it then becomes discoverable by the end users, by the administrators. And that's a key point that I'll come back to. <coughs> so now you've got an app, it's been deployed, hopefully, and then uh, uh, it's been installed into a Jira instance. At this stage, your app needs to listen to events. It needs to know about events that are taking place. So for example, a, a uh, build has just been started, a build has finished, a deployment started, typically just events, what's happened. And so your, your app will need to listen to these events and it can be defined whatever mechanism the tool has, whether you actually build something inside uh, a build system, for example, like Jenkins, or you register for webhooks with a uh, a cloud offering. Once you get an event, you need to work out which Jira issues this relates to. And that's a key point that, that is the onus on you as the integrator. So for example, if you receive a build, you might go and scan the source code and look at the commit messages to pull out the issue keys. Another example could be that you uh, do deployments and as part of a deployment, you take a manifest file and then you can say, in the manifest file, specify the issue keys that this deployment is related to. So it's, it's entirely up to you as to how the mapping is done, but that's a crucial thing. The third part is you need to send an event with the payload. Um, so basically, what is the payload? It's a JSON blob. Everyone's familiar with that. We just have a structured JSON format you send in, and it's very small. So once it's sent in, Jira will take care of the rest of it. So there's actually no UI programming involved at the moment. It's very simple. So once you send the data in, what do we do? So on the view issue, we give the ability to, as you can see on the right-hand side, you've got where the dev panel is. So we can actually put all the other information about the, the builds, the deployments, and the feature flags. Initially, we give you a summary view, but then we give the ability to drill down where necessary to more information, and very importantly, we also give the ability to navigate out to those tools, because we realize you, you will see that a build has failed in Jira. You want to then go to that build tool to solve the problems. On the board, uh, we provide the information. We give the ability to do quick filters, so you can reduce down what filters you can see. We also put icons on the cards, so you can see that there's a pull request open, that there's been a build that's been failing, that kind of stuff. This is my favorite. So the information is then available to be used in JQL. So this allows you to then write ex queries like, for example, in my project, tell me about all the issues that have been deployed into production, because I don't care about anything else at the moment, but has a feature flag that's not at 100%. Because then I could know we haven't finished. You know, the developers told me it's done, but when I run this query, I'm seeing things that don't write quite make sense. So the power of JQL is there. So that's today, but we also have other things we, we plan to add uh, further support for. So the point being, you're giving us the data that doesn't mean we, we stop with what we've done today. We want to extend the capabilities further. So the first one is to support server to cloud integration. Um, I'm assuming people out there are using Jenkins at some stage. 
a very popular build tool. There are good reasons for sometimes you need to run local, local builds. So we're planning to support, uh, support for on-premises servers, so you can integrate Jenkins with Jira Software Cloud. And this is going to be standards based on OAuth, which you probably heard of the keynote, OAuth is a big thing for us. So that's the first thing. The second thing is discovery and onboarding. Now previously I mentioned it was important to get things uh, into the marketplace, so you're c it's, c it's uh, discoverable by the end users. So what we can do, for example, with this capability is we can detect in the uh, users in a Jira software project and we can see that there has been no build service that's actually been associated with it. So in the app, in place, we can say, hey, you know, you're not using a build service, Would we recommend you could use one of these integrations. So in the actual app, we can be making in-place recommendations and actually doing the installations. Third one is to query the data. So we're receiving this data and we're being able to associate things against issues, which we heard in the keynote, the, you know, the, you know, the ABC123 issue key is a, sort of a synonymous thing that people can use to link data together. So we want to make it possible for you to be able to retrieve the data back out. So an example could be that a deployment tool could query J Jira and say, hey, I've just done this deployment and here are the associated issues. What are the actual builds that were used to create this deployment and what are the feature flags that are going to be associated with it downstream? Now that information should be queried, can be queried back out of Jira through those associations. So you can link unassociated tools with it to, uh, to each other. Another example could be, um, it's everything's time series, is the ability to get the list of deployments against the Jira project in the last week. So the, flexi the flexibility is there. And then more value in Jira can mean uh, automation support, uh, a better release mechanism for tracking releases, better JQL, uh, and just generally using the data in more places. So words are nice. Um, so here's the video that if you went to the keynote, you'll see they stole from me. <laughs> uh, and it's just showing you that here we've got a board. You can use quick filters and you can say, I want to see, for example, only the issues that are deployed to production. Uh, there are icons that you can see. And then when we can drill down, on the right-hand side, we have the high-level summary views. Here we can see it's in production. And then you can see the history. This is a more detailed view. And more importantly, the final thing is here you can now link out and this example here is linking out to Bitbucket pipelines, but it could link out to any tool. So basically, when you send in the information, you tell it where you'd like us to redirect the user to if they click on it. So I, I gotta stress what you saw there, it's just all based on the open APIs that anybody can call. So the APIs that we have, uh, we have four REST APIs, they're all very similar in style. We've deliberately tried to pick the same pattern, and the first one is they're push only. It's a very important point that we require the data to be pushed to us. Jira doesn't go to retrieve data. Uh, and that means that we can provide a faster UI. Uh, and also importantly, it's very firewall friendly uh, since we don't have to punch, punch through holes. They're event driven in style. So we basically want to get notifications of updates. So a build has started, a build has paused, a build has finished. And the belief is with having all of these events, then when you want to query the data out, then you could maybe do analytics and say, in this project, how long are the builds taking? In this project, how long does the deployment take from beginning to end? So by tracking the time series, it allows you to do that type of stuff. Consistent in structure. So we're trying very hard to have all the APIs be very familiar. So a good example is how we model an environment. So deployments are done into environments. Feature flags are done in environments. So we have the concept of an environment, and we model it the same way in both of the APIs. Uh, finally, the APIs are, are bulk friendly, so we, we realize there's a lot of data flying backwards and forwards. So we support the ability of sending in data in bulk, is one thing. Another thing we support uh, is that when you send data in, you can tag it. So for example, you could send in all the builds and tag that they're associated with a particular repository. And why we ability is to allow you to, in this day of GDPR and the need to clean up, that your tool repository has been deleted. And so you can send one call into Jira and say, delete every build I ever told you that was associated with that repository. So the, the integrations, the APIs we have are about pushing data in. 
but there are capabilities to extend beyond that. So because we're using Connect, Connect apps at the moment, uh, you have the ability to use extra modules uh, in Connect to provide UI capabilities with inside Jira. So for example, you could provide a web panel to control a feature flag, to control the, the rollout rate, that kind of stuff. And also with Jira 3LO, you can use Jira 3LO to get access to Jira data within your integrations. So uh, you, there's two ways that you can extend easily. <coughs> so there are already a number of integrations already in the marketplace. Um, but if you're here for Summit as well, be sure to check out the keynotes for exciting announcements. Um, I'd just like to call out one of my favorite ones that's in the marketplace now was built by a single developer out of Malaysia. Uh, we just heard about it and I had, a, I had a video chat with the developer and it turned out he was a single developer in Malaysia who knew Connect, happened to see our build API, which we hadn't announced yet, but it was up, and said, oh, I've, I, can, I can do this. And so he went and built uh, a paid integration in the marketplace for Travis CI, and he never spoke to us. It was quite, well, made me very happy for about a week. So finally, uh, here's some references. Um, you can take a photo if you like, but uh, I'm assured that the slides will be available afterwards. Um, so the first one is our REST APIs, which document the four APIs, um, which basically describe what the payloads are. Uh, the for each of the APIs, I said there was a corresponding Connect app module, so that's the second link. And thirdly, we have built uh, a sample add-on, uh, which you can download, just have a look at, to see how easy it is to get started with building a, a Connect app. It is actually, it's not that hard. Um, and also, it's if you just wanted to kick the tires, the app allows you to just call the, the, the API and send in JSON payloads, so you can see what happens. Okay? So, Thank you. I'm around for the day. If anyone wants to talk to me about other APIs beyond the four that we've talked about today, or you've got general questions, I'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Thanks, Oliver. Um, awesome talk. Does anyone have any questions for Oliver? All right, come on. Hi, Oliver. My name is Omar. Nice to meet you. Uh, I have a question regarding the that what you saw um, regarding the data server, uh, Jira server. From these integrations that you already have, and I understand all of them are available in the cloud. Which of them are available in the Jira server? So at the moment, none of them are available in the Jira server. Um, I would suggest you give that feedback. Uh, the APIs are very uh, simple in nature, so. It's not a, yeah, they're not, not a big thing. But no, at the moment, they're, not avail they're only available for Jira Cloud. Okay, thanks. Anyone else have any questions for Oliver? So um, I was going to ask, do you, um, if they have any questions, of course, they, they could probably figure out your email address, but maybe a better way would be on the developer community forums to chat with your team? Sure. Yeah, yeah. so if you guys don't know, uh, do, uh, um, community.developer.atlassian.com. Um, I'm on the dev relations team, and our job is to try to get a lot more Atlassians to be participating there, so you can actually ha engage with the product leads and the engineering leads. Uh, so if you go to uh, the forums, you can interact with Oliver and his team. All right, thanks, Oliver. Yeah.